And this is what we will talk about today. We're going to go through Acts chapter 8, verse 1 to 8. Last week, we talked about Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And now we are going to chapter 8. I'm going to read it. We're going to pray. And then let's get into the word. Acts chapter 8, verse 1. And Saul approved his execution. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the region of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentations over him. But Saul was ravaging the church and entering house after house. He dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Now those who were scattered went preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the crowds with one accord pay attention to what was being said by Philip. When they heard him and saw the signs that he did. For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who had them. And many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city. Lord, thank you for your word today. Thank you, Lord God, that we will get it. What it means that you are allowing us to be part of your great plan, Lord God. Lord, thank you that our lives can be a blessing to others, especially those who don't know you. Lord, thank you that this mission that you have given to us is not just for a select few, but for all of us. Let this truth, Lord, uh, sink deep in our minds and in our hearts, Lord. Allow it to take root as we take a look at your word and allow us to deep dive in your word so that we can not only go out refreshed, inspired, but really go out there into this world, Lord, with that hope and knowing who we are, that we are called to share who you are, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we are witnesses, that we are your good news bearers in this world. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So what was happening in Acts chapter 8? No? It starts with a great persecution. What happened? If you go through um, Acts chapter 6 and 7, you would understand that it was the introduction of the life of Stephen in chapter 6. And in chapter 7, things go differently. It was from a church concern. Now, it was a persecution concern. He preached the gospel. Unfortunately, he was uh, accused strongly. Actually, you know, inanun siya, no? Pinag, uh, anong tawag dito? Inipit siya, no? Nung mga kaaway niya in debate. And so what happens, are you familiar with the story of Stephen? He was allowed to be stoned, no? Have you ever been stoned? Wala naman pong ganun na this time, no? He was allowed to be stoned to death. And verse 1 says, there was a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. It was a great time of stress. They, they had to leave their homes. They had to uh, get out of their homes. They had to leave. Imagine, no, if you were asked to leave your home because somebody is pursuing you, not only to hurt you, to imprison you, to drag you out, it was really something that, ito po talaga ang definition of persecution, no? That sometimes it led to death. Also, in the chapter 7 and 8, as we talk about this, this is the, also the first time that we introduce the character named Saul. I know you're familiar with Saul, who is also Paul, who wrote most of our um, New Testament books. This is an a introduction of who he was. Imagine, no, they asked for his approval that they would stone this first martyr, Stephen. Verse 3, it says, but Saul was ravaging the church and entered house after house. He dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. His main goal was to drag, if you are a Christian, if they see you, you attend Victory Green Hills, they would come to your house, they would drag you out and put you trip. Imagine that, no? We have not experienced that kind of persecution. Sometimes we downplay the word persecution. Minsan na, na ano, natawag lang tayo sa office ng... Um, uh, alive, alive. No, parang feeling na, persecute na ako. This is the real picture of persecution that would actually lead to death. This was the persecution that the Bible was talking about. 
And so this happened right after Stephen was stoned. They were afraid for their lives. And, they, and so they had to leave. They had to leave everything behind. Imagine, no? If you go through the book of Acts, it was described as a life of following God, fellowshipping with other believers. They were growing as a church. They were preaching the gospel. They were caring for the poor. They, gave, uh, they were generous to each other. It was a life of fellowship. Yung kaninang ginawa natin, yung nag-uusap lahat, ganun kasaya yung church. No, that one and a half minute, no, I had to cut it, mga two minutes, when most of us were talking, when most of us were introducing ourselves, it was a picture of a life in church. It felt safe. That's what was, what, that, yun po ang nangyayari. <laughs> and so because this was happening, all of a sudden, the atmosphere changes. All of a sudden, all of us need to leave San Juan. All of us need to leave our homes. All of us need to, and we have to leave now. Hindi po yung, o sige, next week, aalis na. Kasi you don't know when this soul would enter your house and drag you to prison. It was a life and death situation. The Bible says, only the apostles stayed. But everyone was scattered. Verse 1 says, and there arose on that day a great persecution, not just any kind of persecution. It was one of the most fearful times of the people of God against the church in Jerusalem. They were all scattered. Ano po ibig sabihin nun? Nagkanya-kanya rin sila. What do you mean by scattered? When the people of God left um, Egypt, they all went in one direction. But a scattering is different. You don't know where to go. I'm not sure if you've watched mga movies where parang the end of the uh, world mangyayari. Tapos all the cars sinagbabanggaan kasi they don't know what. Imagine ganun. But walang kotse. Baka tao to with all their bags. They didn't know where to go and they didn't know what to do. How many of you know that we have not experienced something like that? The pandemic might be uh, similar, but we were stuck. We couldn't go and we didn't know where to go. This time, they had to leave their homes. And this is what was happening. They were scattered. And not only scattered in the city, they were scattered all over the place. The Bible says they were scattered in the regions of Judea and Samaria. And so they went on their way. Siguro yung iba, may kaibigan sa ibang lugar. So, doon tayo, doon tayo pupunta. Yung iba, hindi natin alam. Basta lakad na lang tayo. Ang important, buhay tayo. So, they had to leave their homes and their lives. No? And so now, as the author of um, Acts, si Luke, Dr. Luke, I hope you know this, that um, the book of Luke and Acts is only parang one book no? in two parts. And so, as Dr. Luke tries to describe what was happening, they were all in danger, no? And if as we try to understand the feeling and what they are going through, now Luke tries to also remind us of what he wrote, no? Of what Jesus said in the previous chapters. So now Luke shows us that the Great Commission moved outside of Jerusalem. They were all in Jerusalem. It moved not because it was a great strategy. It was not the apostle saying, okay, we are filled already in Jerusalem. Okay, now let's go out. That was the plan. But they were growing in this city in Jerusalem, but they were just there. And so what now propelled the church to move out of Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria? It was a challenge. It was a trial that propelled them. As Luke narrates, no, the Great Commission moves outside Jerusalem because of a great challenge. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, this is what we preached last week. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This was the start of the fulfillment of the Great Commission. Jesus said, go out of Jerusalem. Not only here, preach the gospel outside. Imagine no, if Jesus uh, became man here in the Philippines during that time, na wala pa naman yatang nadidiscover na Philippines, baka wala pa tayo nun. Ang sinasabi ni Lord, not only in San Juan, go out also in What's the next town? Mandaluyong. 
And then also go to BGC. And then Alabang. You know, you, you go out of San Juan. That was the idea, but they were all here. The way that that happened was because of a great challenge. And so, what does that mean? I was trying to figure out, Lord, what does that mean? That the Great Commission was accomplished through a great challenge. It actually means that God is still sovereign of all. Regardless of what's happening, God is still sovereign. What does that mean? What does the word God sovereign mean? It means he can still use a great challenge into something great for him. How many of you know that we've experienced God's sovereignty in our lives? Parang even in the worst times, diba, God would reveal himself. Napansin niyo ba yan? Parang even in the worst of times, magpapakita si Lord. And I believe that is all our story. As people of God, we get into a dead end and then there are doorways. They were gonna reveal said, how many of you know that God revealed your, himself through a dead end in your life? Diba? Parang we were all, ako, I remember when I, before I encountered Christ, it was one of the dead ends of my life. And that's when I realized that the Lord would actually do something miraculous so that I can move towards the life that he really wants for me. God's sovereignty over all. And so if God can use every situation, good or bad, for his purpose, then this is what we can be sure of. God's mission continues regardless of what we are going through. I want to say that again. God's mission continues regardless of what we are going through. How many of you may pinagdadaanan kayo ngayon? Raise your hand. How many of you may pinagdaanan recently? Okay naman ngayon? Kakatapos lang, pero may pinagdaanan kayo? Raise your hand. How many of you wala kayong pinagdadaanan? Yung talagang nakahiga lang kayo, yung parang... And so the life that we live will always have challenges, right? And so if we allow challenges to stop us for the mission of God, guess what? Nothing will happen. But this is my encouragement regardless of what you are going through today, God can still use your lives. Amen? Amen. And so verse 4, now those, the Bible says, now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Everyone who left, let's go, to, let's go back to our story. Imagine this, no? They were so frightened. They were, feeling ko, they left everything behind. No, they just had to leave. Nung tinanong ng misis niya, no? anong dadali natin? Air fryer lang. Ano ba? Iwan mo na si Bantay. Basta, <laughs> let's go. They had to leave everything, their comforts of their home. If they, if they lived in a condo that's 12 bedroom, you know, they left everything. And they just went on. But guess what? Every place that they were scattered to, the Bible says they preach the word. Why is that significant? It says, from place to place, wherever they went, they preach the word. Something is unique about this set of believers. The first uh, church, there is something unique. You want to know what that is? Ask me what it is. <laughs> and it's this. No? Imagine this. If you experience persecution, leaving everything behind, Kung tayo lang yun, what do we tell people we encounter? Grabe, ang hirap na ng buhay doon. Huwag kayong pupunta doon. Nagpapataya na doon. Kinukulong na mga tao doon. Huwag na kayong pupunta doon. Alam mo, ang hirap ng buhay doon. How many of you know people like that? Meron ba? Are they beside you? <laughs> there was something unique about these people. You want to know what that is? Regardless of the hardship, they were able to still preach the goodness of Christ. Pagisipan niyo yun for a while. Ako dun ako parang, ko ako yun? Sanega kong tof? Bad review. No? How many of you na-scam na kayo ng isang seller sa isang, meron ba? 
Oh, ayaw umamin. <laughs> Deo? What do we say? Never again. What can be like? But this was a different kind of people. That even in the worst times of their lives, I want to say this, it really was the worst time of their life. Imagine, no? Bago kang believer, and then the authorities were pursuing you. Imagine that. Would that be frightening? Even in the most difficult challenge, the Bible says they were described as people who preach the gospel. It's different. For true followers of Jesus, we can speak of the goodness of God regardless of your situation. I've met people who are terminally ill who can still say God is good. I've met people who lost everything in their business but still can say God is faithful. You can still see their smile. Di po naman sila, they don't deny the fact that they are having a hard time, but they know the goodness of God. What do we say when we go through challenging times? Naparepent po ako asking myself of that. Because in the most miniature difficulty that we encounter, it's easy to rant than remember the goodness of God. I want to say that again. As followers of Christ, we can still speak of the goodness and preach the gospel even in the most difficult times. Amen? And so uh, now we shift the story, you know, from a very general idea. Verse 4, it says, um, they were scattered and they preached. Now we zero in on this man named Philip in verse 5. It's now a story of how one who is scattered preaches the gospel. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. This was an introduction of Philip, he was actually introduced no, in chapter, I believe, chapter 5 or 6. If you are thinking, diba Philip is part of the apostles? Maybe that's the assumption, no? But actually, he was selected, no? Philip was part of the one selected to serve the people. You remember that story? Meron po mga nag na senior citizens na different groups in the first church. And so sabi ng apostles, and these were the first apostles, sabi nila, we are called to continually preach and teach. And so we cannot care for this concern. So let's choose among the people. Who were chosen there? Stephen. The next name there is Philip. So Philip was just like any one of us, faithful in their work, faithful in their community, probably connected, probably one of the leaders during the time, and they asked him to serve. And now, Philip was one of those who were scattered. Umalis din po si Philip. Natakot din po si Philip, just like everyone. As he was afraid for his life, as soon as he gets to the next town, the first thing he does is preach the good news. This is the story of Philip. You can find that in Acts chapter 6, verse 5. No, he was the second no, after Stephen was named. A faithful church leader who was probably involved, who also experienced persecution and now goes to the, to the next town to preach the gospel. The, the description of what happened, verse 6, and the crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip. When they heard him and saw the signs that he did. Wait, Philip was a nobody. Naman siya, uh, he was not a pastor then. He was just a regular person. Look at the person to your right. Mukha bang regular? The person to your left, mukha bang special? Parang shopaw na may pula? <laughs> Philip was just like any one of us. But the crowds responded in so much unity. 
Imagine, no, si Philip siguro, if I would try to imagine Philip as he preached the good news, he sabi niya, probably he shared the bad news, we were persecuted, but I am here now to preach the good news, and everyone that he was preaching to siguro, sabi dito, no, it was described as one accord. Anong ibig sabihin nun? That the first car is a Honda. Hindi, ano siya, no? They were all in one spirit, they were all in tune to him. Siguro habang nagpa-preach si Philip, sabi lang, Can be in one accord. What else? They paid attention to what was being said. And when they heard him, he also was able to do, he saw the signs that he did. No? He was able to do miraculous things, something that not a regular person would do. What happened? We know this, that as the Holy Spirit empowers each and every one of us, he will also give us the power to Proclaim the good news. Amen? And so you know that the Spirit of God leads this man, Philip, might be unknown, and it's actually very encouraging for all of us. You want to know why? First, it's this. Because God's mission continues regardless of who you are. I want to say that. God's mission continues through us regardless of who we are. Kahit sino po tayo, pwede tayong gamitin ni Lord. Hence, I will now talk about why I did the 3 two, one How many of you introduce yourself by saying your first name and then what you do? Meron ba? Sino yung nagpakilala sa inyo ng gano'n? Raise your hand. Meron? Yung ang unang buong, Hi, I'm Leo. I'm a musician. Meron bang gano'n? Yung sinabi nila yung what they do? Meron? Yung iba ba, nag-join or nag-text lang kayo? Ano bang? No? So most of us try to introduce ourselves by saying what we do. But guess what? What we do does not determine your capability of preaching the gospel. Who you are gives you the ability to preach the gospel. Why? Anak tayo ni Lord. Regardless of who you are, you can preach the gospel. Amen? Um, a few stories, no? Um, and so I want to say this, no? Every follower of Jesus, every follower of Christ is a missionary. Yeah, that's the reality. I remember um, we, uh, is Mark here? Mark Guyon? Yeah, and so Mark's here. He's leading our um, outreach. Uh, Mark actually partnered with this guy named Peds. And si Peds po is one of the um, head waiters before no, of um, Gloria Marys, they started this um, victory group. They were, how many yun, Mark? Parang mga nasa 20 plus, no, mga 23. 24, kasi dalawang 12. Hindi, joke lang, wala yan. No, parang may followers sila. So they were, they're, they're a big group. No? And so Peds was also one who was instrumental in helping Mark. He really had the heart for um, the other staff. And so just recently, we actually prayed for Peds because now he's in the Cayman Islands. And uh, si Peds, no? And his heart is really not only as he was, he had the heart to reach out to the people here, his co-workers. Ito po yung prayer ko kay Peds. And I was chatting with him last night. So I said, bro, I know that everything that you've learned here, you will be able to be, you will be able to magagamit mo doon. English. Yeah. And so this is my prayer. As we released Peds, no, our prayer was not only for him to be blessed in that nation. Ang Cayman Islands po is not beyond Boracay, no? Ibang bansa po yan. Grabe, sabi ko sa kanya, oh, when, when's your, uh, uh, ano flight mo? <laughs> ano yun? Via Italy. Tama ba? Hindi. Ano? London. Yon. Lo, by London to get to Cayman Islands. No? And, so, and so we were able to connect uh, Peds also to the daughter of one of our leaders. And so at least they have community there. So our heart is as he goes there, now he's there, that he'll be able to continue what he experienced here. No? To have his church community there and to continually preach the gospel. Everyone is not exempted from this mission of Christ. Regardless of who we are. We can preach the gospel. And not only that, 
God's mission continues regardless of where we are. Kahit nasaan kayo, you are able to preach the gospel. This is your mission field. This might be your Samaria. This might be your Judea. This is possible for every Christian who follows Christ. And you can preach the gospel anywhere, anytime. Amen? And ito po ang um, mga stories ni Philip. Alam nyo ba, in Acts 21, first, he was Philip, the one who was asked to serve the leaders, the widows. Ito po yung ginawa niya, no? Acts of service. And now, he was one of the scattered. He preached the gospel. What else? Now, we see him in Acts 21, verse 8. Ang ganda nito. Sabi dito, on the next day, we departed and came to Caesarea, and we entered the house of Philip the evangelist, who was one of the seven and stayed with him. Now he's known as Philip the Evangelist. Tap the person to your right. Tell that person, you can be Philip the Evangelist. Yeah. Tap the person to your left. Say mo, not Philip Morris. Yeah. <laughs> Philip the Evangelist. Amen? Alam nyo, ang Panginoon... Pagka, pagka inalaw nating ilid tayo, there will be times that are not expected that we are able to preach, share our testimony. As in, wala pong ano, ha, yung hindi siya laging planado. Sometimes we want it planned. Yun po ang minsan ng problem. Pupunta ako dito, magpipreach ako. But sometimes God will use you going to a place to be able to share accidentally. Pero ganun si Lord. That's how sovereign He is. And the reason why I'm saying this is because nakita ko si Ernel. Ayan. Ito po si Ernel. <laughs> now I remember his story. Si Ernel is part of um, the group of pastors and uh, victory friends who would ride no? um, to help the real life scholars. Ba? And one of the stories that he shared to me was when he was in one of the provinces, one of the pastors told him to just share mo yung ano mo, testimony. Na tulak na ba kayo sa ganun? Yung Bigla na lang kayong tinawag, tas mag-share. Meron ba kayong ganun? I saw this meme the other day. Sabi doon, pagka daw uh, Americans or foreigner, when you ask them to pray, oh, pray, anong sabihin nila? Okay, let's pray. Pag Pinoy daw, oh, pray, anong sinasabi ng Pinoy? But ako. <laughs> but Ernel did not do this. No? Pinagsabi sa kanya ni Bishop Jureba, bro, share me in testimony mo. He actually shared his testimony. And it was not a planned testimony. Alam lang siguro ni Pastor Jere his background. And guess what? He was able to encourage a scholar no, to be able to continually live the life of faith. That's how the Word, uh, the word of God and God, God's Spirit in us moves. In every situation, we can actually preach the gospel. Amen? Another story. Um, this is... Um, Colonel Jaime, and Colonel Jaime is very close to us. Uh, he used to be part of our church, uh, but he was assigned to uh, different, nag, ano pa siya, di ba? Parang Nueva Ecija for a season, and now in the south, Colonel Jaime uh, used to be part of our uh, police here in San Juan, and we really saw his evangelistic heart. Alam niyo po ang ministry ni Colonel Jaime? Lahat po ng uh, nasa prison. Sineshare niya ng gospel yon. Minsan pinapapanood niya lang ng ano ng worship service nasa cellphone niya, no? But you really see the heart of this man wherever he is sent to continually share the goodness of God. Amen. Going back, Joe Sulit, uh, Joe the Mango, as he's known to um, us, the older ones, <laughs> and this is now his family in Canberra. Again, no, I want to say this. When they left the Philippines, they were okay. Okay po ang family lang dito. They were doing well. Uh, but the immigration papers happened. They were believing for this. Ang dami pong delay nito, di ba? So many delays by years. But when God opened the door, imagine, no, when they were growing in the church, then they were sent out. And then they embraced the call. I like what he said in his... Um, video a while ago. I'm not sure if you got that. He said, we left for migration, but we ended up on a mission. We left for a migration, but we ended up for a mission. I want to say this. The Lord might bring you to a different nation, might be to a different city, or even to a different career or work. Guess what? 
God can use you there. Marami pa pong taong hindi kilala si Lord. Ako, I felt that when I was in Holcim. Parang, Lord, bakit pa ba ako nandito? Parang meron pa bang purpose? But I believe it was also my time to be used by God in that company. And so there's always a godly perspective where we are today. Amen? Another story, uh, um, a friend of us, no? si, me and my wife are good friends with them. This is Al and Jackie. Uh, they migrated to New Zealand and, uh, with um, their kids. No? Uh, this was last year. No? I asked their picture. Si Jal and Aki were our kids' church volunteers. No? Kilala nila Ernel yan. No? So, Gal and Jackie had a great life here in the Philippines. They were managers. And when I say managers, they're managers for multinational companies. Si Jackie was a manager for Nestle. Si Al was a sales manager for Fontera, the one who sells cheese. But they gave all that up. Uh, it was not easy for them there during the start. But ngayon, no? uh, you know that the Lord has really blessed them. But guess what? Before, when we talked to them, it was um, their concerns. Ngayon, when, you know when we talk to them, for some reason, no, it's all about ministry. Kasi they're very involved. No? In our church in Auckland, the senior pastor is uh, Kiwi. But guess what? 80% are Filipinos in that church. Galing! No? Ang galing because Filipinos will really find Filipinos wherever you are. <laughs> but I like their story because they have been faithfully not only leading life groups, victory groups, but also still involved in the kids' church. Pag nag-uusap po kami niyan, humihingi sila ng materials ng meron tayo sa Manila para dalhin doon. No? And so, and say ko Lord salamat that these are modern day, modern day Philips no, that go to different nations. And so with that, I'd like you to watch this video as we try to land this preaching also. I'd like you to watch a video update on what's happening in our church in the nation of Myanmar. Hello, Ming Lava. Warm greetings from Yangong, Myanmar. I'm Pastor John Tang from Every Nation Church, Yangong, Myanmar. Every Nation Church, Yangong, Myanmar was started by a group of Filipino missionaries. They started English class in a hotel. They evangelized, they discipled them, and eventually it became a church. In 2007, uh, they handed the leadership to the local church leaders. The past three years has been very tough for our church. Uh, because of the COVID in 2020, everything else was close. Then comes 2021, the political unrest took place and many people left the city and the country. However, we are not uh, hopeless. We always have hope in God. Actually, we feel the love of God even more vivid in the midst of this difficult situation in this prolonging chaos. God is now raising up new leaders. One of the greatest blessings in the midst of this difficult situation is one of our finest leaders, Yonggu, he has to go to Thailand, Bangkok. He end up reaching out the Myanmar people there. Many Myanmar students, workers, and migrants, they moved to Bangkok. As some estimated that, there are more than one million Myanmar people in Bangkok right now. So it's become an opportunity for us to reach out the Myanmar people. My name is Yongku. I am part of Every Nation Church, Yangon, Myanmar. So the vision of the church is to help Myanmar people, those who are in Thailand, to find refuge in God. Sharing the good news to the people, to the world, is one of the most important things that we should do while we are on earth. The harvest is still plentiful and the work are still few. Last year when I prayed for God's direction and that verse, the verse that God reminded me, look at the harvest in Bangkok. Actually, this is a great opportunity for us to share the good news to our own people. And we started a weekly Bible study group as well. So God is moving in our midst. And we pray that out of this political unrest and difficult situation, thousands and millions of people will come to know the Lord and we're going to change the history of Myanmar. The Kingdom of God is coming here in Myanmar and many of these people 
will come to worship the Lord. Thank you for keeping Myanmar in your heart and in your prayer. Please continue to extend your prayer for this country until we reach every soul in Myanmar for the glory of God. God is working in Myanmar and please continue to partner with us. Thank you so much. Let's give God praise for that. Grabe no, despite the persecution, despite leaving everything behind, people will still have the opportunity to hear the good news. And that only happens through us, believers. We are the plan A of the Lord. No? Wala nang iba. Ito lang po ang plano ni Lord. Verse 8, as we try to wrap it up. So there was much joy in that city. So, I like that, no? The ending of the story, at least for the passage that we are preaching on, there was much joy in the city. It starts with so much fear, so much persecution, so much of hopelessness, and it ends with so much joy in that city. Joy is found in Christ. No? The life of joy is found in Christ. And so how do we experience so much joy? We have to know the author of joy, the life giver. Amen? I like this. No? Um, I always go back to this no? when it comes to the nations. This is what Rice Brooks said, Dr. Rice Brooks, in his book, The Human Right. The gospel is the only source of true freedom, and everyone in the world has the right to hear it. It is the human right above all others. When we talk about rights, it's something that everyone has a right to experience, to be able to hear the gospel. Amen? Again, I want to go back to where we started. You can be a doorway to someone else's dead end. So as we try to wrap it up again, no? as we try to pray, ito po ang one main idea that I want you to bring home. God's mission continues with us. Tayo po ang magfulfill ng mission ni Lord. We are part partakers of this mission. Amen. Nobody is excluded. We all are able to preach the gospel, regardless of what we're going through, regardless of the situation, regardless of who we are, and regardless of where we are. Amen. Lord, thank you that you are a God who invites us to this great mission that we have. Thank you, Lord, that we can trust you to lead us to our very own different place, Lord, not our comfort place. And Lord, as you continue the mission outside this country, Lord, we pray and we just submit to you, Lord, we petition, Lord, we come together as one church to pray for our missionaries in the field both full-time and also those we sent out, Lord God. They might be there to start a new life, but Lord, we know that as we speak a blessing, Lord, they will have that heart to preach your goodness, your faithfulness, and what you have done on the cross, Jesus, and that you resurrected after three days. Thank you, Lord, that they will embrace this life on a mission to preach the good news to everyone they encounter, Friends, family, strangers. And Lord, same for us. Lord, give us the boldness. It was never about us. It's never about who we are, our career, what we do. It's never about the platform, but it's about who you are in us. So give us, Lord, this ability to see with your eyes who needs to hear the gospel, who needs to experience your kind of love. Lord, give us that boldness today. Lord, allow us to trust your leading and allow us to embrace this life of being one who is sent for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. As you continually be in an act of um, prayer, Lord, thank you for also reminding us that we can take part in this in different ways as we think about what is happening outside the Philippines through our missionaries, 
Lord, thank you for reminding us. If, Lord, if do your work, Lord, to impart a, a specific nation in their hearts that they can pray for regularly. Lord, allow us to pray for our missionaries in the field. Lord, allow us to pray for them as you sustain them, Lord, in the work that you have entrusted to us. And Lord, if, if it is your will for us to be generously givers for these missionaries, Lord, speak to us. Speak to my brothers and sisters if this is the way that we will take part in your mission as givers. Lord, speak to them. And Lord, for those who are also being thugged in their hearts com- com- for some reason, sila yung send mo, Lord, to a different place, to a different nation, Lord, give them the boldness. And thank you, Lord, for the reminder that you have given us the power already. You said it in your word, Acts 1.8. We will receive power. And Lord, you have given us the Holy Spirit. And therefore, we have everything it takes to preach your word. Thank you, Lord God, that we can fully trust you. Lord, I also want to pray for my brothers and sisters who are going through challenging times. Maybe their question is, Lord, may pinagdadaanan din ako. I want to preach. I want to be a, a missionary for you. I want, to, I want to be part of what you're doing in advancing the kingdom of God. But Lord, I'm also going through a challenging time. If that's you, just raise your hand quickly so I can pray for you. Yes, Lord God. Yes. Yes, Lord, I see these hands. Lord, as my brothers and sisters are raising their hand, Lord, Lord, allow them to once again see your faithfulness in the coming days. Lord, allow them to once again experience your goodness, your greatness. And Lord, we pray for breakthrough in their situation. That might be in their career, that might be in their finances, in relationship, or even in their health. Lord, I declare breakthrough to be upon my brothers and sisters today. Thank you, Lord, that you are a great God. Lord, allow this breakthrough to propel them to preach your goodness once again. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can I ask everyone to stand as we send you out? Salamat, Panginoon. How many of you are blessed with the word today? Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Lord, thank you as we surrender our day today. Lord, I speak a blessing to each and every one. Lord, as they step out of this service lord allow them lord activate them to be a blessing to this world lord allow them to be able to preach the good news to their families and their friends lord allow them to live a life that is sent out and blessed this we pray in jesus name amen and amen god bless you all see you next week